Hi, this is David Davis, and I'm honored to be here with Mr. Kevin Wagner, who's Vice President of Marketing for Diablo Technologies. How you doing, Kevin? Very good. Thank you for having me. Thanks for joining us. Absolutely. So I'm really excited. We've got something really cool here. This is a 400 gigabyte, and what do you call this? 400 gigabytes I'm holding in my hand here. Yeah. Okay, so, so we call this uh, memory channel storage memory architecture. Memory channel storage architecture. Uh, and it's basically a 400 gigabyte SSD in a DIMM form factor. And so it goes into the DIMM slots of a, of a server mm -hmm. um, the same way that a DRAM DIMM would. Amazing. So, I mean, I've never seen anything like this. I'm sure, you know, data center admins and managers out there have never seen anything like this before. So why don't you tell us a little bit about Diablo Technologies, uh, what you guys do, where you came from, and, and what drove you to create this innovative product? Okay, uh, sounds good. So uh, Diablo Technologies is a company that's been around for about 10 years now uh, and has you know, wide experience in, in dealing with uh, DRAM subsystems, very high performance DRAM subsystems for, uh, for servers. Um, and had worked with you know, some of the industry leaders uh, on this, uh, such as HP and IBM. Um, so really a lot of history in memory controllers and memory transactions uh, and memory protocols and understanding how the memory subsystem in a server works. Okay. Uh, so after uh, about seven or eight years, the company decided to take that knowledge and experience and apply it to, uh, to flash memory. And so what the company did is built an architecture called uh, memory channel storage. And that essentially takes a flash subsystem and puts it onto the DIMM module, as you see here, um, and it puts it into the memory subsystem of the server. And so what it means is that, that all of these modules are within the NUMA architecture of the system, all connected to the processors via their memory controllers. Uh, and so they're sitting in the system right there with DRAM. It can be accessed uh, the same way the DRAM is. Okay, so why would I want to put flash in my memory banks or my memory uh, channel? Okay. Uh, very good question. So, so there's a few different reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one, and kind of the, the easiest to explain, is, is locality. Okay. okay. So, you know, currently everybody thinks of flash memory as uh, as storage, mm -hmm. and you know, it, and and it is storage, right? Um, but it's also memory. Flash memory is is a memory. It's a persistent memory, and we tend to use it as storage. So, in the past, what we've done as an in industry is we've taken it and placed it at the end of storage protocols. Um, and had storage stacks talking to the devices. Um, we used SATA and SAS uh, mm -hmm. to connect them up. And then when we got really tricky, we decided to attach them via PCIe. All of those uh, connections are outside of the NUMA architecture of the system. Uh, so anytime the data is required from the storage subsystem, it has to go through the storage stacks, um, you know, out to whatever the, wherever the device is, across SATA, across SAS and bring that information back in. I'm hearing latency, 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 right? Yes, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. That, that's definitely the way to read it, right? Okay. So we've taken that and we've put that into the storage subsystem, which means that any time the data is needed, uh, it never has to leave the, the processor subsystem, okay. the memory subsystem, okay? Um, so when data is needed, it just goes through the memory controller and it gets the data. Now, when data is, is being taken from a storage device and brought in uh, for use, it's moved to DRAM. Mm. So you can imagine if you take it from you know, an external device that's on PCIe or SAT or SAS, it has to go out there, get that, bring it in, move it into DRAM. If you have something like this that's already attached to the memory controller, then you're never leaving that memory controller. And so moving it from the persistent memory that we have on the device into a DRAM location is simply a mem copy, essentially, within the memory controller of the processor. So almost no latency. There. Yes, very, very yeah. low. I mean, it's because Flash low. has extremely low latency, uh, and you're putting it in a location that where it can best be utilized, really. Yes, and with our architecture, we've we've done some some things to make sure that the that we eke out every bit of latency that we possibly can, and so some of the you know write latencies that you you might typically see with Flash, we have a way of abstracting that away and hiding those latencies, hmm. and even though we've we've hidden those latencies we're still able to persist that data uh, into the flash at the very, very low, uh, you know, on the order of five to seven microseconds. Fascinating, fascinating. So, I mean, five to seven microseconds. I mean, what would a traditional spinning disk have in latency at the end of a, a disk chain? Many, uh, many times more I, than I'm that, not sure, I'm sure I can talk about spinning disks yeah, and, and yeah. where they're at. I, I tend to think more in terms of, uh, you know, SAT or SAS okay. SSDs or yeah. PCIe SSDs. Yeah. 
Uh, so in terms of sat on SAS, it's somewhere on the order of maybe 140 microseconds, wow. something like that. Uh, if you're talking about PCIe, you're mm -hmm. talking in, on the order of maybe 20, 25 microseconds, uh, somewhere in there. Uh, what's really interesting about this, though, is, uh, is that when you deal with other types of flash devices, when the IOs increase, uh, then you also increase your latency. Mm -hmm. And so as you have more and more writes that are stacked up, then your latency increases because it has to try to deal with all of those that are in the queue. Uh, so when you hear the 20 or 25 microseconds, that's typically for a single write to the device and the acknowledgement back. Okay. In our case, uh, we don't have to worry about that the way that others would. And the reason for that is that we take these and we distribute them throughout the server. And so you'll have many of these in the server, and while you're reading from some, you might be writing to others. And so they all act independently of each other, uh, and they all work in parallel. Mm -hmm. And so while you might have a PCIe SSD that has one big, fat, fast pipe out to that PCIe device, you can still only read from it or write to it at a time. Mm -hmm. And so mixed workloads are a little bit more difficult for it to deal with. And as you queue up a lot of transactions, then your IOs uh, increase, and, but your latency increases as well. Ours doesn't. And that's one of the things that's very, very unique about this. Wow, so what types of applications would people want to, to use this with? Uh, so actually we're finding uses for it uh, across the board. There, okay. There's a few reasons for that. Mm -hmm. um, one is that, that you know, it gets the very low latencies and it stays low latency when the, when the IOs scale and get very high. Um, but the other thing is that, that you know, we're able to deal with, in, uh, with this in a very granular uh, level, um, but also make it very scalable. And so you can put, you know, these come in 200 gig and 400 gigabyte uh, capacities. And so you can kind of put as many in the system as you want to, depending on the number of DIMM slots you have. And mm. typically ser servers have a lot of DIMM slots, yeah. you know. Uh, so, you know, you can put two in there, four in there, eight, 16, you know, as many as you want to, to, to really scale it for the workload that you're trying to solve. So uh, another kind of unique attribute is that as you add more and more into the system, it has linear scalability in mm. its performance. And so if you take two in a system and double that to four, you're going to get double the performance. Mm. And it's very unique. Yeah. Uh, and so you can tell that the overhead uh, that would typically be there isn't there with this architecture. Again, because they all act independently of each other. Wow. Right? So, uh, so to answer your question about workloads, uh, you know, we really see a lot of different use cases for this. Uh, okay. Virtualization is a very good workload for us. Um, uh, big data analytics is very good for us. Um, you know, we're seeing a lot of use, of course, in electronic trading, you know, very low latency type applications. Uh, you know, areas like that, those are kind of the use cases that we've really been focused on. Um, database is a big one for us, you know, especially when it gets into like a mixed workload, right? We excel at mi mixed workloads, and so database environments where you have a very heavy mixed workload, uh, we tend to do very, very well. Okay, you mentioned virtualization, which is an area of particular interest for yes. me. So, you know, I know a lot of, you know, server-side caching solutions and, yeah. you know, even like VMware's vSAN, uh, which is currently in beta, uh, all of those things require uh, server-side, you know, flash be installed. And most servers today don't come with that, so it's something that companies have to install. Do you foresee uh, this product being a solution for those, those applications? Absolutely. So, so one thing that's important to know is that uh, you know, I, I get asked the question a lot of times, so, you know, how does this work in the system? Mm -hmm. And how do the operating systems or the hypervisors actually see this and, and make use of it? Uh, and the simple answer is that it, it works the way any other device would. If you take a PCIe SSD and you put it into a system, you have a driver that loads that basically tells the hypervisor or the operating system how to communicate with it. From that standpoint, we're no different. Okay. We're just, you know, higher performance and lower latency and different performance characteristics. But essentially, we operate the same way uh, to the operating system or the hypervisor. So when you put these inside of a system, they'll come up as a drive that the system can read from, write to. Mm. So you can use it as a traditional block storage device, the same way you would anything else. Uh, so from that perspective, you know, using it as a storage device uh, is you know, very good for virtualization, but also you can use it as a cache. Okay. So when you want to use it as a cache for the hot data coming in from external storage devices, uh, maybe your VDI environment, um, you can use it as a cache and save a lot of those costly trips out to the external storage array uh, and also cut down on the amount of traffic going out to those external storage arrays. And so the contention that you would typically see out to a SAN is cut way, way down. 
Yeah, for example, uh, like with VDI, I know, you know, boot storms, that's a big problem. Absolutely. Uh, and then mixed workloads, you know, with VDI, there's just so many different I.O. patterns, it's hard to predict. And so, you know, caching and, and uh, flash solutions are, are really uh, a great option to solve those problems. So, yeah. so you end up with a, with a blender effect, right? The I.O. Right, blender effect right. in, in a virtualized environment, right? Mm -hmm. And this really helps with the I.O. blender effect. Amazing. So uh, what did it take to create such an innovative uh, product? I know you, you mentioned you had some different partnerships and some amazing engineers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me a little bit about what's gone into creating this. Okay. So, so there's probably two, two areas of, of development that are kind of important here. One is, uh, you know, we have a team of engineers up in Ottawa that, uh, that have been working on this for, you know, several years. Uh, very late nights, very long weekends, late hours, and they, you know, they've really put their heart and soul into really coming up with something unique and very, mm -hmm. very different. Uh, and, and really, you know, by the time I came along, you know, it, was, uh, it was fairly well baked. And I, what I saw was they had just done this amazing job of building a new architecture, something very, very unique. Yeah. Um, and so I think that was, that's very important is you know, the amount of effort that they put into it and the thought to really build something that different. Mm -hmm. Uh, the second thing I would say is, is we've had really tremendous partnerships. Um, the two in particular are SanDisk. Uh, originally it was Smart Storage and now it's SanDisk. Um, they are the partner that we have that is actually building the Flash subsystem on there. Um, and so the, the Flash controllers, the Flash that's actually on there, uh, the FTL that's running on it, they really built out the whole Flash subsystem. They're really the experts in Flash. Okay. Right? We understand memory controllers, memory interfaces, the transactions, uh, and what they understand is the Flash subsystem. So it's a really great marriage between SanDisk and ourselves. Uh, so that's really been great for us. The other one is uh, just recently announced is IBM announced that they have some new servers, um, very, very powerful servers, very unique, uh, and they're offering this in these servers. Oh. Uh, and so we already have customers very interested in getting their hands <laughs> on, these, uh, on these boxes and really trying them out. Uh, running their workloads on them and seeing how it really solves their problems in the enterprise. Amazing. Well, it's a really fascinating and innovative product. Uh, I look forward to seeing these, you know, come to the market. Uh, I know you look forward to that too. And Absolutely. I appreciate your time today. Thanks so much. Yeah, very good. Thank you. I appreciate it.